All right, there, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Let's talk about social media posts, right? The pictures that we see, let's talk about high intensity and polarized light and how you can utilize it to make your tattoos look way different than they do in real life. All right. <laughs> now that's over with, we're back. High intensity and polarized light. I'll move this out of the way here. Um, you'll see a lot of people will be using like, oh, I got no filters on my social media posts, et cetera, et cetera. And other people don't say anything like that. And we can see a varying degree of difference in the actual quality of the images that are being um, produced and viewed by the general public. And more often than not, it's going to come down to something just as simple as the amount of light that's being used. And then also, if that light has been polarized or remove some of that through polarization uh, for the picture when it is being taken. So this is like two different ideas um, and it's, it's really educational, I think, for clients, especially when they're going into uh, viewing tattoos that they see on social media or online to understand the quality of the image does not equate to the quality of the tattoo, right? Um, so let's start off first like what the high intensity light does for a tattoo. Now, we've had a few videos on this where we've talked about light and melanin and energy and how that interacts with the actual pigments, right? So if we have our basic skin model here, which we use a lot, and we have a whole bunch of pigment that's been deposited in the skin for the purpose of a tattoo, right? We can think about natural ambient light that we have like inside the shop. If you've got you know, floral lights or LED lights, or whatever else, they're gonna have a quantity of, and we'll just do like light quantity of one, right? Where there's gonna be a certain amount of energy that's being emitted by those lights, right? And that is gonna give you a certain amount of emissions with interactions of that. I'll use a different color, shouldn't I? Um, Whoop, let's do that. A certain amount of emissions where that energy from these lights that is being supplied is gonna interact with that pigment that's in the skin. Cool. Now, if we take something, let's say like focus light that has a million lumens, like one of those bright, you know, spotlights that you have for whatever, you know, like it's, you're escaping from jail and they shine it on you, you know, like in the movies and they're following you around. Well, that amount of light that's being output by that, that bulb or whatever else is being done is usually going to be of greater quantity, right? So what we're gonna see is more energy is coming into that same space or area of, of interaction with where that pigment is. Inversely, it's gonna create a greater amount of emission. <clears throat> so what happens is you shine more light, more energy gets to that tattoo. And when it comes out, it appears more vibrant than it would if you're just using ambient light. Um, you can see this to be true if you have somebody who has uh, medium to darker toned skin and if you're going to take a picture of their, their tattoo and you just use like things like ring lights or if you have one of those wand lights or even if you just take your, your cell phone and you're not taking a picture and you turn on your flashlight as bright as you can and you put it close to their skin, the tattoo becomes far more vibrant. <clears throat> You can see colors better, you can see black more deeply, and that's because there's more energy that's actually being focused into that area than what is ambiently available, which makes the tattoo appear brighter than it does, right? So that's why when we, when we see some of the pictures that are on there, some of these colors appear so amazingly vibrant is just because there is so much energy going into it that is not what we would normally see. I mean, like if there was that much energy coming down from the sun constantly bombarding us, it would probably burn us alive, right? But um, it wouldn't. maybe it would, I don't know. We don't want to get into that stuff. We'll talk to the physicist who we'll have coming on the show later uh, <laughs> to discuss that stuff. But what we're doing is we're just creating a hyper-realistic situation, right? That, 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 amount of energy that's gonna be used is not something that's normally gonna happen. And I mean, it's also focused on a very specific space, right? If everywhere around you had that same amount of energy, that tattoo would appear dimmer. But it's just because it's contrasting against the available energy that is available around the tattoo, it makes it look brighter than it does. So <clears throat> the next one we'll talk about is polarized light. And this is probably, this is just a touch on it. I, I'm. I like physics, I'm not a PhD, <laughs> right? So 
Uh, we'll just glance over this quickly and hopefully it makes sense with the bit we just had there, right? Um, light energy, when it comes, it's not just a straight ray where it's just moving in one direction, right? Light can move in a circle one way or the other, right? Where it's actually like spinning and moving. It can move in a wave form. It can move flat. There's a bunch of different ways that that light is actually going to like come from, right? A photon emissions from some type of source that's creating that that in energy interaction with something else, right? And when we think about having something that's polarized, what we're doing is we're removing some of those uh, emissions, right? If we have light that's moving into very specific uh, wavelengths, waveforms, and they end up meeting at certain points in time, so what they do is they end up competing for that space, and you're going to have variances in the amount of energy that's going to be, you know, uh, expressed with that interaction of whatever medium that you're hitting into. So when we start having all of this stuff coming in, what happens is you're going to have the same color, right, that's being hit with a bunch of different energies, it's going to end up kind of muting itself out because there's a bunch of different values that are going to be expressed by how much energy is there, right? Like, you can think about the white and black light that we had talked about in a previous video, where <clears throat> when you're doing like your, your 3D color wheel, which we'll just do in the 2D block here, right, where we have our white light and then our blacks and then our pure color, Right? Black is an absorptive, white is an emission that's going to be you know, brighter, and wherever it's mixed inside of there, we have like an opaque gray that's light gray, and we'll have a darker gray that's down here. Um, that's just based on how much energy is actually available to interact with that pigment that's being placed in the skin, billboard, whatever, right? And when you have these varying amounts of energy based on the polarization of, or like rotational speed or direction or waveforms or whatever, you're gonna end up getting a, a ton of variances inside of these spaces. And if you have a lot of absorption based on how these wavelengths are going, it's gonna decrease the, the strength of that color, right? So what we do to combat this in modern photography is we'll grab a polarized filter and we'll place it over top of our camera and what happens is that camera now is only going to be getting very specific wavelengths of light that can fit through that filter so it's going to get rid of some of these so rather than having competition where you're going to have a whole bunch of variances inside those colors competing for space and there's going to be different absorption values and not you're just getting basically one set coming through <clears throat> and if that's the brighter set on things it's going to make the colors look a lot brighter I know this is like some heavy stuff, but this is what happens when science and, and social media get together, right? We're going to be taking something that has a very strong amount of specific light, high intensity lights, and we're going to polarize it down so that everything only comes out looking like it's extremely strong. Those colors, it's a much more pure tone possibly. It's going to make the tattoos look far more real than they would in ambient light or surroundings. So. If you're doing that stuff, I mean, more power to you. I think that everyone, when we're out there taking pictures, should try to mimic what the tattoo looks like, not to you, but to the environment that it's in, right? We used to just go and take pictures outside because there was so much more light when it was sunny out that the tattoos looked really bright. But you can do that. If you want to do these things, let people know that you're doing them so that they can understand what's going on. Now, if you're a client and you're looking at some of these things and you can't really tell, if it's you know been modified or not. Some of the things you need to look out for to know if it's been modified with polarization or high intensity lights is how deep the black is. Um, if you see something on a screen and the black is so dark that it just looks like it's it's Vanta black level dark. It's it's probably been polarized or they're using high intensity light on top of this as well or up in contrast effects on their phone. Um, real black is going to be filtered through the skin, right? There is still going to be some type of emissions because when we deposit pigment into the skin, it's scattered. It's not totally solid that's in there and being able to absorb all energy that's actually being presented to the skin, right? It's going to give off the illusion that it's black. Um, so you're not going to have something that's really truly heavily black. There's another one to look out for, especially with the videos. With the videos, if they're choppy. 
if you're looking at them taking the video and it looks like the frame rate of the actual video is going down and they're moving slowly and almost feels like it's choppy, that's because polarized filters have been used and the actual cameras that are being utilized to take this are having to adapt to the amount of energy that's being brought into them. What happens is it, it's almost like you're moving through to night scene because the camera is detecting a lower amount of energy that's actually being introduced to it. It has to change it, it'll widen its aperture, its ISO rate, all these other things to try and make sure that it's able to keep up with what available energy is there. So if it looks like it's running at 14 frames per second versus 120, you can usually tell that there's been something done with this, right? And then the last one is going to be the focus. <laughs> I know we could put vignettes on stuff, but if you see something that was taken and it just automatically looks like something is mildly out of focus, there's probably gonna be a polarization on that. You can see when people take videos or even with the photos, they'll have one that's a bit out of focus and then you can see it snapping into it. It's usually because they're using an, uh, uh, a filter of some sort that they're having to adjust that's gonna end up focusing along with the focus as that light level is going to be modified through polarized light, even if it's high intensity. And then the cameras, the digital cameras that we use now are having to adapt to that change in light energy that's being presented to them. Does that make sense? Anyways, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and that's it for today. Anyways, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.